the tool as well as write the code uh, because uh, of the background in computer graphics. And this is the tool, and uh, this is a chart, and this is the original one I created. And uh, I model this in Blender. So this is my other interest apart from uh, you know uh, teaching. Uh, I spend time as I as Sir told that I'm told that I'm uh, a member of this uh, film and uh, artist alliance. So uh, my students use this for you know learn this stuff uh, during their free time. We have meeting like uh, once in a week, and uh, we discuss about what are the recent stuff going on. So in this, way, students also get the idea of how to use the tool and other stuff. And uh, let's go to the topic for this. So data science is nothing but it's about data, and uh, um, um, we have a lot of data, and we produce a lot of data. Uh, the term big data is used, and I'm going to tell what is big data. So there's nothing big about big data. It's because we produce a lot of data. We have large, vast amount of data. Example is like you use Facebook. Uh, like a lot of people, uh, whatever the, whether they're sick or not, they update the status every one hour saying that I'm sick, I'm feeling angry, I'm depressed, blah blah blah. So that they use they use your data to make, you know, they will uh, take your data and uh, uh, provide you suggestions. Or if you search Google something, you know, that is linked to Facebook and you get the related ads. For example, when you're searching for the flights to US, the cheapest flight, you know, which day to fly. I was Google, searching on Google, but somehow my Facebook knows that and I got the ad, you know, go to US for cheaper, six five or six hundred dollars. Uh, that's how they make use of the data. And it is a combination of all this. So before it was called as uh, analytics or business analytics. Now we have a new field because data science, because they combine neural networks. You know, you have learned a lot about neural networks, right? So, the neural networks, they have many layers, they call deep learning, machine learning, along with the data we have. So, we have a new field called as data science. And uh, basically, if you have, if you have, um, uh, uh, if you have uh, learned any course on statistics, uh, you see that, you know, statistic and analysis, you use, uh, you know, your, like chi square test, all that stuff, right? So, that is, if you have math course. So, everything you can do in, uh, uh, you know, you can uh, now have a lot of data, you can experiment with the data, find the patterns. So what is data science? Uh, so there is two words together, data and science. So we have a lot of data and is there and, uh, and uh, the science, what is the science? You are trying to get some meaningful information about the data, you know. So because as this data is not structured data, like for example, if you take a, a Oracle MySQL, so you have this structured data where you have relational database management system. Uh, we connect one uh, table with another table through for, uh, primary and foreign key. So that's structured data. We have structured query language. So these data are unstructured. Now, uh, what do you mean by unstructured? For example, if you create a Facebook profile account, you don't have the information for all the fields. In some fields are even, uh, you know, some people lie about their age. Some people lie about something, something. So, uh, and it's not all these data are also not valid. And some of the fields they don't even fill up. Like status like married or not, they don't fill up. So, so a lot of data is there, but these data are all unstructured. You know, it doesn't have uh, any structure, and also it's not even like accurate. So, um, and that's why we need to have some kind of uh, tool to extract some information, meaningful information from this data. So, this is a process called as data cleaning. So, data cleaning, you get a lot of these data from Wikipedia. You can get so you clean this data, remove the unwanted data. Or, or I mean all the text fields, all this uh, stuff, and you try to find anom anomalies in the data, and, uh, and uh, remove the data, and try to make some sense of the data. That's what is the data science about. And because we have good technology nowadays, my laptop has a GPU, so we have good technology. Laptops are coming with GPU, high power computers, and everyone uh, like Donald Trump won the election. So they were like people. They used to see the Facebook post. You know, someone is against Donald Trump. So they will customize and tell positive things about Donald Trump, you know, why, why Donald Trump should win the US president to make America great or whatever. So it will change your mind, you know, psychologically it's going to change your mind. So this is the one they are trying to use. So they are going to say the collective psychology, you know, to tell also what is the reason, what is like, a, you see that, right? What is the trends going on today? What's the trend, you know, trending topic or whatever it is. So they are making use of your data, you know. So. Uh, but if data science is used for a better purpose, uh, for helping humanity, it would be much great. But 70% of the time, it is that, that it is helping for the you know, profit, I mean, corporate companies, uh, uh, 
to increase the profit and one example is that pricing i don't want to go through the, all the examples so pricing you know dynamic pricing uh, even if you take uber or ola so the pricing is not uh, done you know the price increases that's a high demand or whatever it is and basically how they do is by dynamic pricing so sometimes the price is less sometimes the price is more so basically based on how customer demand so computer algorithm automatically changes the price of that you know particular ride so if you wait for a little bit more time you know if there is like less if it's more number of cabs less passengers and automatically the price will be reduced and some way it is to then objective is to increase the profit for the company uh, uber or ola it's not a profit for the customer customer is okay some customers okay sometimes they are lucky so they get food a cab for the cheap price but our overall goal is like to increase the profit for the company that's why if you uh, travel in aircraft or airplane uh, to us some people might have traveled for book the ticket for 800 dollars to go to us and some might have paid even 4000 dollars at the net it's a profit for the company so one customer pays more one customer pays less so that is an example of uh, pricing i don't want to go through all the examples so merchandising is also the use you know how a particular product has been is you know trend is you, whether to increase the product uh, for example apple phone so they will make the uh, production according to the how customer demands so those are the things which is also they use predictive analytics what is going to be in the future they estimate that so social media as i said so customer satisfaction the stuff so social media and you can read and these are some of the examples of applications and evolution of business analytics as i said so it's called business analytics or data analytics you can use these terms interchangeably and it is used in business intelligence information systems i mean it's a combination actually it's like combination of all these fields and uh, this is from the book book and different people come with the uh, different uh, 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 perception but uh, you know all this uh, you can see the intersection is nothing but is called as visualization i hope you can see the slide and uh, we have uh, statistics uh, business intelligence uh, modeling and visualization so you can see the intersection of these domains and uh, these are all overlapping domain as such well, these are not um, in segregation so these are interrelated with each other basically and the benefits uh, of data science it's for the managers to make a better uh, you know reducing the cost you know reducing the labor cost reducing you know um, the cost of, of um, you know the raw materials better risk management faster decisions and challenges is like lack of understanding of to how to use the analytics since you have a large amount of data as i said before so you have to clean the data we don't know which data is uh, you know really real which one is fake so you have to identify the anomalies in the data and remove that and then get uh, some uh, meaningful data to make analysis so this is the these are the challenges and uh, the scope of analytics can be uh, described into three ways so the descriptive analytics is the use of data to understand the past and the current business performance so will, yeah as i said uh, i can give an i mean uh, how many how much of your cell phone if you're manufacturing cell phone how much you have to produce so that is can be made through descriptive analytics i will give an example of that in the later slides in predictive analytics uh, is you predict the future by examining the historical data detecting the patterns the relationship in these data so and then extrapolating so this is like one examples of predictive analytics is the, i always give is the weather system so the current weather today is doesn't depend upon the current situation whether there is a cyclone or not it also depends upon the history okay what happened last year what happened the last 10 years on this date and what happened in the last 50 years on this date so that is going to be a predictive analytics so we are trying to extrapolate forward in time extrapolate means that you don't have the data for the future so you try to whatever data you have you try to take that and make an extrapolation predict the future so which is contradicted to the fact interpolation interpolation means that you know in time zero i have this value and time uh, 10 minutes i have this value so that time five units what is that so that is called as interpolation so i did interpolations for my phd work as well so we know that the cell is there and uh, snapshot of cell like on focal images you have the snapshot of cells you know and uh, at cell at time zero the cell looks like this at time five the cell looks like this or cells might have divided so i will examine what is happen in between you know in between what might happen to get that shape so that is called as interpolation but extrapolation is something you don't have something you know going forward in time you don't have that and you are going to use the previous data and uh, current trends 
to estimate uh, what will be happening in the future. That is going to be predictive analytics. And prescriptive analytics is like, a, uh, this is an example I just give, is that you want to, you are having a company and your objective is like to maximize the profit. So subject to some constraints, like you are running a company and you have limited by the resources, you know, you're producing something, let's say I'm producing this uh, um, a remote or whatever it is. So you are producing this remote. Um, um, so and you have you need to have raw materials to make this like plastics and these are not infinite resources so you have uh, particular constraints we call this as constraints and uh, based on these constraints uh, you have to maximize the profit an example is that labor labor availability is a constraint so in a college or university so the number of professors they are infinite so based on how many professors are there based on that they have to make a schedule right so even in our universities we have six professors in computer science so based on the availability of the professors only we can decide okay how many courses we can offer and how many students are registering based on that we design the schedule and the objective of there is to you know uh, to increase the student performance that is objective so in real life scenarios increase the profit subject to the constraints like labor availability uh, resource availability and that you can do prescriptive analytics not using tools like python or r programming uh, I usually teach this course and I use Excel for that prescriptive analytics. You know, if you go to Excel, you have a solver tool. If you go to solver, it's a plugin. With the solver, you can use this. So this is a linear optimization problem. Okay, so this one prescriptive analytics. And uh, uh, tools, as I said, I don't want to go to the list of the tools. So you can use Excel. Excel is a very good tool to do data science analytics. The problem with Excel is that it cannot handle large amount of data. Uh, because you have millions, millions of data, right? Millions of records, and Excel cannot load that much amount of data. It's not scalable. And nowadays, cloud computing is there, everything is there. So you want something, you know, which is also scalable. And for that, Python is much uh, better, and our, our programming is good. So it's scalable. It can it can handle large data set. And there are several, you know, uh, tools and uh, and for example, this tool. What if analysis you can do in Excel itself? So what happens if you change uh, the selling price of the product? How much you are going to get the profit? Or what happens if you increase the quantity? How much you are going to get the profit? So that you can do with Excel forecasting. All these things can be done in Excel, uh, but Excel cannot handle large amount of data. So it's better, you know, it's a tool developed by Microsoft. It's not open source. You cannot customize it. So it's better to learn some programming language like Python, use Jupyter Notebook, and you can do a lot of uh, data anal uh, data analysis. So last week I was teaching at uh, Bell Tech University where students were, uh, you know, comparing the salary of basketball players, NBA players, and um, how they performed, you know, in what what season they didn't perform well. So based on that, we used real data set and examine how whether the playing uh, style is related to the uh, salary or not. You know, it's high. You know, in the U.S., the, the football and this these players, the coach gets a lot of money. They get like uh, uh, 14, 15 million dollars per year. So they are like paid a lot. So why certain coaches are getting more pay or why certain players are getting more salary than others, whether it's because they have a good playing style or strategy like that. So we were examining with the real data for the last week uh, course on data science and we used Python and uh, um, and used Jupyter Notebook to code. And um, these are some other stuff. You can do the same stuff in Excel, but it's a better way to learn programming, right? And, uh, and this is an example of uh, potential applications like let's see this is I mean retail markdown decisions in back in US and Canada they don't have the inventory like uh, there so they will increase the price they it also they use dynamic pricing so for example as an example uh, summer clothes uh, are cheaper in winter and winter clothes are cheaper in summer so but what price they have to sell is based on you know how much customers have how many customers were selling in the past how much how many customers were buying in the past uh, the particular shirt or particular brand so based on that they adjust the price and uh, they want to clear up the inventory so they don't want to keep the inventory and for that they use uh, 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 this uh, all this you know uh, uh, this is an example I'm just giving so you, they can use uh, this different uh, uh, kind of analytics uh, so this is examining the historical data for similar products prices and units and advertising this descriptive analytics so predict sales based on price, okay, based on price. This is like price elasticity, right? And um, if you have learned operation uh, research course. So if the demand of the project product increases, 
so if, sorry, when the demand of the product in, sorry if the sale of the product <laughs> decreases the demand of the product increases right that's not always true even if the iphone is like for one uh, one lakh people are buying iphone because for you know to have that but usually it's like a demand versus price if the price of the product decreases the demand of the product increases that you might have learned so product predicts sales based on the price sale sorry uh, price and the prescriptive analytics is about um, uh, finding the best set of prices and advertising to maximize the sales revenue so this is like possible sets of prices and uh, advertising you know advertising means that where you want to advertise whether in facebook youtube you know whether advertising and based on that you are trying to say increase the sales revenue so the, the, for the same kind of uh, problem you can use different kind of analytics to approach the problem that's what it is and uh, let me go to the um, i think i okay and i don't want to talk about this tool uh, but uh, these are some of the commercial tools that are available for data analytics uh, for example since i belong to the business and computer science department a business professor uses sas uh, tool for analytics because for them it is much easier to use for us a computer scientist we can write code as from the scratch you know we don't have to rely on this tool but these are some of the tools that have been used uh, uh, for data analytics and what is data is what is data data is numerical or textual facts and figures that are collected through some type of measurement process so an example like you know you try to take measurements of certain things like temperature measure the temperature of this room you know using that uh, temperature sensor or you you have used um, um, vernier scale or uh, in your school days vernier scale and screw gauge to take some type of measurement so you are taking basically collecting data right and information is basically you know applying and for some find of formulas equations models to get that some meaningful from that data um, simple pendulum you have some certain trials you know increase the mass and stuff and then you substitute the equation to find the gravity so that is like information you are processing that so information is a result of analyzing the data so people are often confused with the data visualization and information visualization always uh, information is visualization is the right word to use because we data as such is large amount of data we are not visualizing all the data we are processing the data the process data is called as information and we are uh, basically um, using that information to visualize why you want to visualize the data is because it is better to visualize it because if you show it in numbers people it's very hard to see right and um, i mean hard to interpret you know if you show in numbers but if you show as a uh, uh, some kind of visualization for example pie chart uh, or uh, the pie chart or 2d chart whatever it is so that means you, you are uh, there is like a lot of uh, things which i can show an example later if i have time uh, which uh, which is a very good example of information visualization right and let's go to the next uh, this thing is example of data source i'm not going to you can see where the data comes from the last point is very important for us the web behavior is recently been used so how you, whether you use incognito mode or whether you use uh, uh, you know google but they are collecting your information what website you are visiting and uh, all these informations are collected you know you don't know that and you rely on something but it's not always true and anyone can get what what you are accessing you know through the ip address everything so based on the web behavior uh, they do um, uh, they do uh, predict what the user is thinking or and try to sell the product so as i said before and this one i guess you should know uh, what is data set is a collection of data so marketing survey responses is one example uh, where they collect you know for example i was studying doing my phd so different uh, blindfolded study so they they didn't tell me what coffee is that so they were giving me different coffees and you know and telling me which taste you like and i told okay this coffee i like okay then it's like starbucks so it's like blindfolded study you don't know which coffee company it is and then they do marketing survey responses like that and table of historical these are some of this uh, this thing so this is a collection of data is nothing but data set okay collection of related data for example how a player performed in particular season what is the salary in that season so that is all a collection of the data about the players so for example you have student list of students you know student um, how they are performing in particular subject so the, all the uh, data related student are stored stored in the student table in the university system right and database is nothing but collection of all related files 
So that is the database. So one table, you have one table, but in relational database management system, you have multiple tables and these tables are linked together through primary and foreign keys. If you are taken like a course like Oracle or MySQL, so that's the database. The collection of uh, related files, uh, containing records on people, place or things, that is database, some of the definition. And this is an example of database. This is a simple Excel file. So you can see that the collection of related fields, uh, um, basically uh, these are the fields or attributes. and and this is called as a record. The first row is the record, the second is the record. So this is like, for example, let's say the student ID, student name, first name, last name, and where he comes from, which city is. So all these things is about a student. So that's called as a record. We normally use that in day-to-day -day life. So there's a record about student. But all these fields, these are called as attributes. So this is collection of attributes or field of attributes that makes this a table, okay? and. Uh, and uh, big data, big data is nothing but, you know, uh, IBM defined like this, volume, variety, velocity and veracity. So, a uh, lot of people say big data, big data, but actually they don't know what is big data, you know. People just blindly use big data. But the big data means that, what is big data? The volume that you produce, because the amount you produce, for example, in Facebook, let's use your Twitter, how much, how many posts you're producing, that's volume is like, you know, depends upon the age also, like young people tend to use Facebook more, so every one hour they put a Facebook update, you know. So they produce a lot of volume, the young, young, young age people and old age people might not use Facebook. So the volume is there and variety, you know, varieties of data. And uh, it's not related to one thing, you know, it's like uh, disconnected. For example, Facebook example, let's say that. So what movies a particular person like, you know, variety, it's about movies and where they go, all these, which places, which hotels they visit and which, uh, 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 which uh, cab company they are often prefer to take. So those are varieties of data. About It's not about just one thing, it's about different things. And velocity. So velocity is also more. So that, that is volume is more. So volume is related to velocity. Because the velocity you produce, what is velocity? Time. Yeah, with respect to time, right? So the how do you, uh, how do you distinguish velocity? So how do you define velocity in physics? Yeah, speed divided by time, right? So the amount, average speed by time, the distance by time, distance by time. Uh, so average speed is distance by time. So speed is uh, again a scalar, velocity is uh, you know it's a vector actually. It has a direction, but they use speed, okay? They use velocity. So all v v v, and veracity. Veracity. What is veracity? Anyone knows the definition of veracity? Rate of change of, no, no, this is not about the physics and talk. Veracity here is inconsistent data, so incorrect data. So you have to assess it, the anomalies in the data. So uh, that is, uh, some people may lie about the age in Facebook. So they will tell that I'm 18 years old, but they might be 40 years old, right? So that is uh, inconsistent data. So we have to identify that also. The veracity is the correctness of the data. That's such veracity. So the big data is nothing but volume, variety, velocity, and veracity, and that is the thing is about this particular point they call is a big data. And this big data is unstructured data, and uh, where you have, uh, you know, sparse matrix. If you have learned the data structure, you see sparse matrix. A lot of these are zero values. So sparse matrix is there. So a lot of these values are empty, or the particular attribute is empty. So that is going to be. Um, uh, the property of big data. But if you talk about database, that's all structured data. These stu these are unstructured data. And uh, it's called as no SQL. They use no SQL. SQL is structured query language and no SQL is not a structured query language. There's no SQL. And for Facebook also, you have this FQL, Facebook query language, where you can get the information about your friend's friend. And, you know, even though they talk about privacy and other stuff, you know, if you're a good programmer, you can use the Facebook API. You can get a lot of information about your friend's friend and other stuff. So there is no true privacy in Facebook as well. You know, if you are a good uh, programmer, you can get a lot of information about others uh, using the FQL, the Facebook query language. Okay. Uh, anyway, so metric is uh, this is a metric and uh, measurement and the measure. So um, um, metric is nothing but unit of measurement that provides uh, a way to objectively quality, uh, what is it, quantify performance. So this is like you know. Unit of measurement, right? So unit of measurement. So if you just tell a number, it doesn't make sense. For example, not much though, but there is tiny difference. And there are two types of metrics, which is called as discrete metrics and others continuous metrics. So discrete metrics is like, you know, 
you can have you know how many customer calls you attended per day is basically is a discrete metric it's going to be an, it's going to be a number it's not going to be infinite right so and you are measuring per hour and you know you're not going to measure per microsecond because no one can speak in microsecond so that is going to be discrete so discrete the time is discretized basically it's not continuous in nature so these are some of the discrete metrics so number of deliveries okay and these days swiggy orders is there how many deliveries they make per day so that is going to be all discrete up per hour you know usually these follow this uh, you know all this log company follows this logistics now i was working in mcdonald's people so in while in was doing phd also i was doing work in mcdonald's so they what they do is how many burgers they make this hour based on how many burgers they make, so make and how many they sell and based on that they are going to uh, okay if the burgers are the specific burgers telling us uh, selling like at a faster rate so they increase the production quantity for the next hour so that's why they use so this one is not just a uh, data science they also use in real life you know so that there is a uh, profitability minimum loss is there right because they have to throw the burger after some time they cannot keep the burger because every one hour they will throw the burger whether or not they will give to people or not so they are good in throwing the burger they waste a lot of burger and that also they count how many burgers they waste per day so i was having experience working there so i can give this an example so that's a discrete met metric so continuous continuous metrics are just uh, based on a continuous scale of measurement and here is uh, involving uh, dollars length time so those are like uh, continuous in nature so there is going to be continuous metrics and uh, again you can define this data as categorical uh, ordinal interval and the ratio data so the data that you collect can be described in different uh, um, uh, order so here some of them is categorical so here what is categorical is like about a supplier name so that is going to be any textual thing is going to be categorical of course you can assign a numeric with it so uh, you know for example student name is basically categorical but you can put student number you know and have it but still it is categorical data and uh, uh, ordinal data or next one is called as ordinal data can be ordered or ranked according to some relation to uh, to another like for example uh, let's say that uh, you bought something on particular date or customers order date you know you can order by the date ascending order descending order so those is ordered uh, ordinal data basically if you have data that can be ordered that's called as ordinal data and interval data is something you have constant difference but they don't have absolute zeros you know if you take any difference between these two datas or dates and uh, that's going to be interval data because they don't have any constant like zero uh, arbitrary they don't have like perfect zero points and uh, natural zero okay and for example this is going to be which is uh, well, let's take this example so this is an example of uh, ratio data so we have an interval data so which have constant in differences and ratio data is something which have natural zero so that you can have the zero point and from that you refer you know here for interval data you don't have the natural zero it can be anything it's going to be relative okay and uh, these are the examples i don't know whether you can see that so this is going to be ratio data so here quantity you know quantity can be having absolute zero the ratio data means quantity can be zero it is measured from zero it cannot have quantity as minus one so that is going to be a, a ratio data right quantity cannot be minus one anything quantity has absolute zero so you can compare one uh, one row with another and uh, do that you take the ratio of it basically it makes sense and it has absolute zero that's going to be ratio data um, Anyway, coming back to this thing, so data reliability uh, um, um, and validity. So, as I spoke, you know, uh, this is very important, and uh, I just have to have my glass in front. Sorry about that. The customer survey is this, okay? Maybe count each day, and but it's not valid because it doesn't measure that this uh, customer dissatisfaction, okay? So this is number of calls to a uh, customer service. For example, um, when I called U.S. Embassy for some help, and that lady was speaking and uh, in Tamil, so she was speaking very fast. Her objective is to complete the number of calls, to increase the number of calls. So how many customers she attends and finishes. But I was totally dissatisfied with the. Uh, how the answer was made so here the data is uh, you know 
is uh, it's not a reliable measure. Okay, reliability is here. It's not a reliable measure because sorry, this is not a valid measure because uh, it doesn't measure my uh, satisfaction. So it is not just you know completing. It's not doing for the namesake. You know, some people just show the program output and get that uh, you know show and get 10 points, but that is not reliable. That is not a reliable measure of student performance because they might have. Uh, uh, copied the code from someone else, but although the data is uh, valid, you know, you give points to the students basically, you give points to the students, uh, but they have the output. So, um, and uh, this is also a survey question that asks a customer to rate the quality of a food in a restaurant and may be neither reliable nor valid because different customers may have conflicting perceptions. Like if you go to a restaurant, and some people like spicy food, some people like sweet food. So uh, basically how you value the restaurant, you know, um, it's basically based on the customers may have conflicting perceptions, okay. Some, some things about, you know, how the server is serving the food. If the server attitude is not good, you're not going to go to the restaurant, right? So if he's not, if the customer service is not good, it's not about the pro food quality or the food taste, it's about the customer service as well. So these, these things, okay, survey question that, uh, ask a customer to rate the quality of the food in the restaurant may be neither reliable uh, nor valid. Okay, and this includes other elements of service besides food. So, this is about data validity and uh, reliability. So, why I say this example is that you know, uh, if you want to uh, find the sentiment or if you want to find how good is the restaurant, uh, we have this uh, in reality. Uh, they use a lot of analytics. You know uh, how. Um, particular um, uh, restaurant is, you know, the, based on ratings, uh, they try to uh, give you a score, but th that is not review score or whatever, that score is not reliable or not uh, consistent because it has these two faults. So based on that, how you decide which data is going to be valid or invalid. So these are the problems actually with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the data that we have, you know, all these criteria is not easy to meet. And let us go to the next uh, thing. Uh, what is a model? Model is the abstraction of the representation of a real system or object. So all this thing, you have to create a model, mathematical model. I will give an example of mathematical model. And uh, I have a lot of slides on this. Uh, I can talk for an hour or more than that, but I will try to give an example of a model. So, uh, but uh, model must capture the most important features. Uh, you know, a model is an abstraction of the real world. So you cannot capture all the features of the model, I mean, of the real world. You have to abstract at certain levels. For example, in my thesis, I was modeling the cells growth and division. So I cannot model the curved wall. So I have to, you know, uh, uh, put a line. I have to abstract, you know, draw a line between the two points. I cannot draw a curve between those two points because you need at least three points to draw a curve, you know. So I have some problem with the model. So that is like uh, abstraction is needed. You cannot capture all the entities, you know, all the real world behavior. So that is the, you should capture the most important features. You should know what to capture, what not to capture. That's very important. It can be written or verbal description. First, usually with written word, verbal description, then visual model. For example, if you go to software engineering course and you design the use case diagram, everything, right? So you have a textual description of the what you want and then you have go to the use case. Use case is more of a visual diagram, right? So, and uh, even a spreadsheet, okay, is enough to capture about the model, okay. We do modeling with a spreadsheet also. Uh, it's not spreadsheet, it's just putting, I'm not sure how many of you know the advanced uh, things you can do in uh, Excel. There are many things you can do in Excel, more advanced for especially data science. And uh, as I said, uh, this is verbal description of the model. So um, uh, this is um, one of the example uh, I can give is that when a new product is being released, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, it looks like, you know, when you are selling, when iPhone 3 was released, people didn't know, know about iPhone, right? So it was like, very few people were buying it. But slowly, the good uh, thoughts are based on uh, other people, you know, what they say. And based on that word of uh, mouth, uh, you know, people told, okay, iPhone has good features. Before that, Blackberry was the one which was dominating and Blackberry and a lot of people are having back Blackberry. Then what happened is that there is a surge increase and a lot of people got, uh, went to the, you know, uh, in the winter time and usually release new models are released in October. It's very winter. So even though, even though it's winter, people are standing in the line and uh, getting the models of the iPhone. So there is a steep increase. So first is like 
slow demand for the product, then there is a steep increase, and then slowly it reaches the saturation point. I think iPhone has reached the saturation point. So, and if any company knows that, you know, we are not going to be there forever. So they know that how to make money. And that's why, you know, uh, there is, for example, if you see this example of iPhone, so this is slow, in, slow, it was like, it was like lying flat, then it was like going slope was high, and then it becomes saturated. It's like a form of a S-shaped curve, as I showed in this, this thing. So let's say that uh, in weeks, first few weeks, it was, demand was very less. And after that, the demand of the product is, was more, the sales also increased, and slowly it is going to reach the saturation point. That is why, even if you see Facebook, Facebook uh, people, Mar, uh, the, the Mark, uh, I don't know his last name, no, that guy's with Susberg, right? I don't know how to pronounce. And uh, he goes in, uh, you know, he just, uh, Created this. You have, if you have seen movies like Social Networking, uh, he did just create it for his friends. But it became a luck. You know, suddenly, you know, he uh, it was a luck for him. So he developed Facebook. A lot of people use Facebook and basically targets people from usually China and India because we have a lot of population here. So uh, thing is that he knows about Facebook. That's why he is uh, bought WhatsApp because he wants to run his company. And then um, then he's uh, goes to Insta. You know, people they want to pull to Insta because he knows that any product even as a software product or real product that you can hold physically and software product is something is not physical you know it's like just lines of code people write code you know that even has a lot of value means you know uh, the price top price and uh, which is not even real software is the one which you cannot touch and feel hardware you can touch and feel right uh, but um, he just moved to uh, insta because he knows that facebook is going to uh, going to go down and that happens with any product so there's going to follow this s shaped curve so it's going to start and then even Jet Airways, you know, Jet Airways was famous, now Jet Airways is not there. So it's any product or any company will have, a, for even in history, there's every rise, there is every, for every rise, there's every fall, right? So US may be a good country now, but it might fall soon. And China may be the leading country or India may be the leading country. So for every rise, there is a fall. So in real business scenario, it is going to follow the S-shaped curve, basically. And uh, a mathematical model is sales, is a present, you know, this type of uh, equations you people work out. It's not just they come with this equation. So they're predicting the sales uh, basically uh, using uh, exponential and uh, E is the base of natural logarithms. So here you are doing E power something and this are the, is the example of mathematical model. So some are constant. So how they arrive at is basically analyzing this data. This is not just writing on the board. Uh, basically, people, statisticians uh, uh, have the data and try to come with the mathematical description of the model. And based on the mathematical description, you can estimate how many sales you are going to make, right? Is that clear? So, you know, like for example, if you are selling ice cream in the winter or December, in December season, you know that ice cream is not going to going, uh, go to be fast. So you have to produce less quantity. So when you, when, which is the uh, month where ice creams are sold a lot, so you can find from the data, you know, get the data from the company and then you can analyze the data and increase the production for that particular month, you know, May month or June month, if you want to increase the production, you can use, you can develop a mathematical model basically. If you have some data, you can always uh, do a mathematical model, which statisticians or mathematician computer scientists can do that, creating a mathematical model and also not mathematical model. So this is the influence diagram is a visual representation of a descriptive model. Uh, the first case I told you. So let us let me show an example of a, uh, this influential diagram. So we have this uh, total cost. Total cost is dependent on fixed cost. This is a mathematical model again. 